Hi, my name is Wouter Emery and I'm the founder of Airshaper. In this third video in our series on how wind tunnels work, we'll have a look at some of the most widely used measurement techniques as well as some novel ones. One of the most important output parameters of a wind tunnel test campaign are the forces and moments on the object. Now to obtain these, the object is typically connected to a 3D force balance, which is a device that can measure the forces and moments around three perpendicular axes. Now it's very important to make sure that the influence on the airflow around the object is as small as possible, which is why that these connection parts that connect the object to the force balance are often given an aerodynamic profile. To measure the static pressure on the surface of an object, one can use pressure tabs. These are small holes drilled perpendicularly to the surface with a tube fitted to each hole inside the model. These tubes are then sent to a pressure transducer, which is typically located outside of the wind tunnel, where the pressures are measured and logged. Now if you want to measure the pressure on many locations on the surface of your object, you'll quickly have a huge set of cables that needs to be led outside. This means that during the design of your prototype, you need to take this spacing constraint into account. Alternatively, you can work with miniaturized pressure transducers that fit within your model, and then convert the data into a digital set of data and then send it to the outside world through a single cable to save space. When it comes to visualizing the flow around an object, things become even more interesting. One of the oldest and most common techniques is to release smoke upstream of the object to trace its path. Now, this can lead to very insightful information in terms of where the separation point is located, what the size is of certain vortex structures, and so on. But it's quite difficult to deduct local flow velocities. So over the years, a number of interesting alternatives have been developed. First, PIV, or Particle Image Velocimetry. For this technique, tracer particles are released upstream of the area of interest. The size and density and so on of these particles are chosen in such a way that they follow the real flow nicely, without dropping to the ground or disturbing the flow pattern. They're then illuminated, typically in a 2D plane, and filmed perpendicularly to that plane by high-speed cameras. By tracking and tracing the position of each individual particle between consecutive shots, one can reconstruct their path and calculate the velocity vector. Another interesting technique are 3D measurement probes. By measuring the differential pressures at the head of these multi-hole probes, you can obtain the static and the total pressure, the angle of attack and the velocity. And if you then trace the position of the probe itself in 3D, you can reconstruct a 3D flow field. So that was it for our third video of the series How Wind Tunnels Work, with a quick glance at some of the most widely known measurement techniques as well as some of the novel ones. I hope you liked it. If you did, please click the like button and drop an interesting comment below. Thanks a lot for watching, see you soon, bye bye.